Now, before we start swapping and stacking a bunch of different kind of filters like we have in this one, uh, let's talk about how to contain and control those filters a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and turn off all these filters. And as you turn these on and off, you're going to see what these ended up doing. So like this one here, if you click on it using a screen tone and it's kind of only put into that shadow. So I'm going to show you how to kind of contain these different filters to different areas of your object. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to turn all these filters off. You're going to see now we just have our regular render. By the way, if you're just joining us in this video, you do have to have a BPR render to play with these filters. So if you don't have your object rendered, make sure you go up here to BPR. I'm going to turn this SPX down to zero so it renders a little bit faster. Hit BPR. Now we're in best preview render mode and now I can go and play with these filters. So filter one, we're going to go ahead and turn on. Uh, by default, it's set to saturation. Uh, let's talk about that just for just a second here. If you turn on polyframe, and we have a line turned off just so you can kind of fill it with whatever that poly group color is. And in this instance, it's just one color. And then we go ahead and hit BPR. You're going to see it's going to turn black and white. That's because this very first one they have on here is saturation. So it's essentially desaturating our object. So the next video series we're going to do after this one, after we ex explain this area right here, is how to go through and do a cell shaded look just using filters. Uh, but for now, let's back up just a little bit. And we're going to change this filter uh, from saturation over here to noise. And we can go ahead and turn off our polyframe. We don't really need that. Uh, of course, when we turn our polyframe off, we got to go up here and hit BPR again. There we go. So now we've got a BPR render and we have noise turned on. Down here, we can see noise is set to 50. If you crank that all the way up to 100, that's going to give you a bunch of noise. And if you crank it all the way down, it's still going to be a bunch of noise just with a different algorithm. But let's go ahead and crank that up to 100. You're going to see, you can still see a little bit of that object. If you change this front color here to a black, that's going to completely obliterate that object here. Um, I'm not going to go into a bunch of noise options just yet. So we're going to keep this front color up to white, just so you can kind of see what I'm saying here. But you're going to see with this blend mode here, that replace is set to normal. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go front color down to black. And with that blend mode here re uh, set to replace, it's replacing uh, everything with just that noise. However, if we go over here and we say multiply, it's going to multiply that noise onto your BPR best preview render image. And alternatively, you can also do average. You can do darken, you can do lighten, you can do screen. All those Photoshop blending layers you can use to not only blend the filter with your BPR image, but also blend these filters as they stack together. But let's go ahead and set that back to blend mode replace. You see we have that cranked up to 100, so it is full noise here. And then the opacity, if you drop that opacity down, you're going to see we're going to start seeing a little bit more of that image show through. Of course, if you take that opacity down to zero, it effectively removes that filter. Let's go ahead and crank that back up to 100. And let's talk about how to contain this noise to specific areas of our object. Now, we don't have a mask set. We're not masking it to any specific area. It's covering our entire best preview render image. If you go down here to radius, that's just going to change the radius of the noise. You're going to see the noise gets bigger or smaller. And then this is how to change what type of noise you're getting. We'll just go ahead and stay with normal Gaussian. 